Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before we get started with our very special guest, Claire Lopez, today, I want to remind viewers to text TRUTH to 88202. You'll get signed up to be on the American Truth Project's mailing list. You'll get episodes and uh, articles like what we're doing now on your cell phone. It's always free. Or you can go to our website by typing in findberry.com. You'll go right to ATP. You'll be able to sign up there. And again, it's always free. So today, Claire Lopez is back, formerly of the CIA, and for the last decade or so, the Vice President of Research at the Center for Security Policy. Claire, welcome back. Thank you, Barry. Good to be with you. Okay, we have got an amazing topic. You and I were just talking, and uh, I'm shocked about this news. Um, I'm shocked because it is huge news that is not front page yet, but you have written an article breaking the story that we have on our website. Uh, people go to our website, they're going to see your article that you are now going to explain. And what I'm referring to is this massive attack on the Saudi oil processing facility, the likes of which have never been seen before. It was originally reported that it was a drone attack coming from the Houthi rebels in Yemen. And you say that's not what happened. So what's the real story? Who literally blew up billions of dollars worth of infrastructure and according to some reports, took half of the Saudi oil production facility offline? Yeah, that's exactly what happened, Barry. So on uh, Saturday the 14th uh, of September, um, an attack that included apparently a couple of dozen drones, or, or perhaps uh, around 20, let's say, drones, uh, as well as maybe up to a dozen cruise missiles, struck two uh, giant uh, oil petroleum uh, processing facilities uh, in Saudi Arabia. And um, the damage uh, was, was massive. Uh, the strikes were very precise. Uh, they, uh, those drones and those cruise missiles landed uh, with, with terrifying precision exactly against the elements of those production facilities that took them offline. As you just said, uh, knocking out perhaps as much as 50% of the Saudi oil daily output uh, and uh, around 5% uh, of the global world oil production per day. Uh, now, I'll hasten to add uh, that because, thank you, President Trump, the United States is energy independent today, and also because we have a very huge um, strategic oil reserve, President Trump was able to uh, make a statement very quickly that he authorized release of whatever's needed from our uh, oil strategic reserve to keep supplies flowing around the world, because even though the United States is energy independent. Many of our friends and allies around the world, let's say in particular out in East Asia, Japan and Taiwan and uh, South Korea and others out in, in that uh, area of East Asia are not energy independent at all and depend uh, a lot on, on supplies coming out of the Persian Gulf. But so back to, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, where did the attacks come from, right? On September 14th itself, the day of the attacks, later on that day, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo took to Twitter, Tehran is behind uh, nearly 100 attacks on Saudi Arabia, while Rouhani, that is Iranian President Rouhani, and Zarif, that is Foreign Minister Javad Zarif, uh, pretend to engage in diplomacy. Uh, Iran has now launched an unprecedented attack on the world's energy supply there is no evidence the attacks came from Yemen. That is Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Twitter on Saturday the 14th. The very next day, uh, President Trump took to Twitter, as he is wont to do from time to time, and uh, he said, and this is a quote from his tweet, Saudi Arabia oil supply was attacked. There is reason to believe that we know the culprit are locked and loaded, 
right? But waiting to hear from the kingdom, that is, of Saudi Arabia, uh, as to whom they believe was the cause of the attack and under what terms we should proceed. So very correctly, um, uh, in, you know, ensuring that Saudi Arabia takes the lead. After all, this was an attack on their territory, on their uh, oil facilities. So um, we know right from the get-go that the administration had intelligence. I mean, reading between the lines here, right, uh, that the attack did not come out of uh, uh, Yemen, where the Houthis, of course, are the Iran-backed uh, Shiite terror militia uh, that is fighting uh, the the government, the uh, the uh, legal government of uh, of Yemen, uh, and an uh, alliance of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, backed by the United States and others, uh, is is fighting, um, or, or at least supporting and backing uh, that alliance uh, because, for I mean, for good reason. Yes, the, the toll on Yemeni civilians has been horrific, but the point is Iran and its proxies cannot be allowed to have a foothold in a place as strategic as Yemen. We could talk about that more later or another time. But Yemen, of course, controls, sits astride the Bab al-Mandeb, the narrow strait that, that, that lies between the Arabian Peninsula and the Horn of Africa, and it leads up into the Red Sea, into the Suez Canal, and and thereby out to the Mediterranean. So hugely important strategic place. Formerly, attacks against Saudi oil facilities had come out of Yemen as recently as July this year, 2019. And the missiles used uh, obviously were supplied to the Houthis by Iran. But this time, um, apparently because of satellite imagery and other intelligence on the ground, for example, I understand that the Saudis have found uh, pieces of, of, of at least some of the wreckage um, of, of at least one or perhaps more of, of these um, missiles and drones that were launched at it. And they can tell from the pieces they've collected on the ground that they, these were made, these were made by Iran. But more to the point, um, that the, the, the attacks actually came from Iran. Now we'll recall as well uh, that as recently as a couple of months ago, um, attacks against the Saudi oil facilities had come out of another direction, the north, out of Iraq, where the Hashdashabi or the Iraqi Shiite terror militias are under the command of the Iranian um, Quds Force commander, Major General Qasem Soleimani. And those attacks were traced to uh, Iraq, where Baghdad, unfortunately, is basically a satrap of, of Tehran. But these attacks, due to intelligence, satellite imagery, um, are understood by U.S. intelligence, and this has now been announced, it's public, to have come directly out of Iranian territory itself. Claire, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for visiting us on American Truth Project. Remember, uh, you can find Claire at her website, the Center for Security Policy, and you can sign up on our website, americantruthproject.org. Type in findberry.com, it'll take you right to it, or send the word truth to 88202 and sign up. All of our stuff is always free. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.